In today's video, I'll be going over a special project that demonstrates something in chemistry called a clock reaction. Clock reactions are really special because they exemplify the reaction rates between compounds at different ratios and temperatures. The specific clock reaction I am after today is the iodine clock reaction. There are many different variations of this reaction, though most commonly seen is performed with vitamin C. Though almost all variations of the reaction use hydrogen peroxide and starch. Further explanation of how this reaction works will be given later in the video, but first, let's get into making the solutions and perform the clock reaction. Also, really quickly, I would really greatly appreciate any feedback or comments on my method and procedures. A lot of the times, the best way to grow is with the community input, so I would love to hear what all of you have to say. The materials that we will need are pretty simple, and I'll break it into liquid and dry compounds. First, we will need hydrogen peroxide at 3% and iodine tincture. The strength of the tincture that is most commonly found is 2%, so that's what I ended up using. Both of these can be regularly found at any pharmacy. Next for our dry components, we will need starch and I am using cornstarch, and finally vitamin C tablets. Either pills or tablets work because we are just going to be extracting the absorbic acid and leaving the pill fillers behind. The first thing I'm going to do is take about 1500 milligrams of vitamin C. We need to get into smaller chunk and powder sized pieces, and so I will add all three pills into a bag and smash them lightly with a hammer. It doesn't all really need to be powderized, though it will make the little next step a little bit quicker. Next we'll need to pour all of the powder into a beaker and top it off with anywhere between 30 and 60 milliliters of distilled water. From here, we just need to mix everything. Vitamin C is pretty soluble in water, but a lot of the pill filler will be left behind. Once everything is mixed for about a minute, we can move on to filtering. This probably isn't 100% necessary, but it does make the end solution cleaner. Doing this is easy, and I just use a small funnel and some cotton to filter it. Coffee filters can also be used in this step if cotton is unavailable. Once everything drains through, we can see I have a nice clear solution of vitamin C in water. The next thing we'll need to do is get out our bottle of 2% iodine tincture, and we just pour in the entire bottle. As we add in the iodine, we can see the tincture go from brown to colorless when it hits the azorbic acid solution. What is happening here is the vitamin C splits up the I2 ions into I- ions. The natural state of I- or iodide is colorless, while I2 or iodine is actually purple, but it comes out brownish and that's the color we usually associate with iodine. This only works though if we have an excess amount of absorbic acid. Now I'm not gonna lie, I did mess this part up slightly. I thought I bought 2% iodine, but in actuality I bought 2% iodine and 2.4% potassium iodide. So with 2% you need about 60 milliliters to make this work, but with this composition you need closer to 25 milliliters. When I added the second bottle, all of the azorbic acid was used up already and quickly the brown color came back. I felt silly, but to fix this it was easy and we just needed to repeat the first step and make some more vitamin C solution. As soon as more vitamin C solution was added, everything cleared up. I will then dump this solution into a bigger beaker, followed by topping off the solution to 500 milliliters with distilled water. This solution is complete and now we can move on to making the second solution needed. The next solution consists of water, cornstarch, and hydrogen peroxide. The first thing we'll need to do is add about 0.5 grams of cornstarch to a beaker. Too much cornstarch and your clock reaction will take a little bit longer to make its final complex, but this isn't always a bad thing. After this, we need to dissolve most of the cornstarch in water, so I add about 260 milliliters of water to the beaker. The real problem is that cornstarch is not really soluble in water, and to make most of it dissolve we have to heat it up. This is where a microwave really comes in handy, and after about a minute 30 seconds, almost all of the cornstarch is ready to dissolve. Finally, just like the first solution, we filter everything through a piece of cotton before moving on. This can take a while, but it really does make the final clock reaction clear, so everything just looks better. Following this, I add the cornstarch and water into a bigger beaker, followed by adding in about 150 milliliters of water. Then, we top this solution off to 500 milliliters with hydrogen peroxide. And now both solutions we need for the clock reaction are complete. 
For the clock reaction to work best, we have to add in equal parts of solution A and solution B into a beaker and mix them together. The time for the solution to change can be determined by measuring the reaction rate. For this, the specific composition of compounds it takes anywhere from 45 seconds to 50 seconds to change color. While we wait, let's talk a little bit about what's going on here. When we mix our solutions, there is actually a lot more going on here than meets the eye. And, well, that's because during most of the reaction it stays clear. What is going on though is two separate reactions that are competing with one another. Hydrogen peroxide is a really great oxidizer and tries to push the colorless I- ion back into its colored I2 state. But the excess of azorbic acid in this solution A is constantly working to push all of the colored I2 back into its colorless I- state. Though, because we've added in so much additional hydrogen peroxide, the I2 does start to overpower the azorbic acid. This is where the reaction becomes visible. The azorbic acid eventually runs out, and the I2 will start to build up. As more of the I2 ions are hanging out, they start to complex with the I- ions to create I3, or triiodide, which then quickly complexes with the starch to change color. What is really cool about this mixture is that it takes a while for the triiodide to complex with the starch and I get this really cool intermediate gray phase before it goes completely blue. Earlier I mentioned how this was a great example of kinetics and these multiple reactions are why. We can either increase or decrease the reaction by either changing the quantity or of our starting materials or changing the temperature in general. To make everything go quicker, we can add in additional hydrogen peroxide as well as increase the temperature. Or if we want to make things take longer, we can increase the concentration of vitamin C or lower the temperature. Anyways, after this it's pretty much just having fun. After adding the reactants together we can time how long it takes and this is one of the most basic and still to me amazing clock reactions there is. I went ahead and tried this project first with decolorized iodine and let me go ahead and say you can make it colorful again, but not in the same steps you saw in this project. Anyways, I have a bunch of videos currently being filmed, and none of them would be possible without my amazing Patreon subscribers. They constantly support my videos, and I am actually working on starting a Discord so I can keep in direct contact with them as well. And here are their names. Here's a list of all of the videos I have planned for the future, and until next time, have a great rest of your day.